a Lowe's Webback. And this time we have a nice laptop to repair. It's an Asus i5 10 Gen. This job is coming from a computer business. Let's check their email. Has no sign of life at all. I did some basic tests to make sure it wasn't the charging port and seems like the issue is on the motherboard. So that's all what we know about this laptop. I will say let's plug a charger and see what it's doing. Yeah, this is an Asus small round pin. Let's see what can be wrong. Plug in the charger and it's taking some current a little bit, so it's not the charging port. So like 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 15 milliamps. Pressing the power button, nothing happened. No, actually it's 1.5 milliamps. Okay. Let's open the laptop and let's have a look inside. Maybe we can help them. And the laptop is open. Yeah, that's a nice motherboard. Proper nice small motherboard. I can't see liquid damage. So it's pretty clean. Let's check a few things. Yeah, like the main power is present. So we have coils, we have MOSFET, and we have capacitor. We have capacitor here and capacitor here. Sorry, let me switch to voltage. So the main power rail has no voltage. But what was that beep? Let me disconnect the battery. Let's switch back to beeping. And main power rail. It's zero ohms, check that, zero ohms, exactly zero. Let's come with the power supply like usual. Try to find what is shorted. We have ground. Yeah, it is ground. And we need a thermal camera. Uh, I'm going to use the old one. People ask on, uh, on the last video with the uh, Microsoft thermal camera. Sorry, how you mount the, the camera under the microscope? And I will be honest with you, I use hot glue. And the camera was fine till the moment the polarization ring got hot and fell down. So I need another solution to put the camera there. So I don't have yet another solution. But if you have any idea, just let me know. Till then, we're going to use the old uh, thermal camera. So it's taking 2.7 amps and what is getting hot, what is that? that, that that's an easy pizza, right? Check that. It's an easy pizza. One second. Yeah, that's an easy pizza. So we have a shorted pizza on the motherboard. And I, but yeah, it's not, it is point checking. Check that. It is any point checking. You can see it's cracked. So if I come with alcohol, and plus, uh, no, nah, it's taking too much current. But you can see the alcohol is getting evaporated. So our pizza is shorted. So what will happen? I'm going to remove this cap. So the cap is removed. Yeah, we do have another one, check here, a big one. It's on the same track, so everything is fine. So what about now? Hmm? The laptop, it will work. Let's cool down the board. What do you think? Let's plug the charger. Actually, let's plug the battery. Let's plug the charger. Yeah, one volt. Okay. 20 volts. Plug in the charger and check that 700 milliamps. Huh? We have lights here. Huh? Let's see if we have any picture. That would be nice. Doesn't seem to be charging. I mean, the current should be way over one amp. Because the laptop is on 1.7 amps, check that, 1.7. Okay, start looking good. We reset the bio, so we have to wait a little bit. But interesting design. So you have the fan here, which is cooling nothing. Then you have the heatsink here. 
So probably if you have the back cover, it's uh, pulling air from here. We have picture, huh? What do you think about that? Less power of the laptop, and the laptop is off, and it's taking one amp. You can see that's the charging current. And we have the charging light. Hmm? I am working on um, some um, laptop repair tutorials. Yeah, Definitely, there, there will be a lot of videos. It will be this month. I'm working on it. Because we have computer business, which they want to fix it, but they don't know how. And we have this kind of faults, which is very easy. So as soon as you are able to identify the main power rail, then you can check it with the multimeter, you can see, sure, then you can come with the power supply, and actually with the thermal camera, you can figure it out the fault. So it's just a matter of uh, day or weeks till the uh, laptop repair uh, tutorials, they will come. Now, missing capacitor. <laughs> Already we spoke with about missing capacitor, removing the capacitor. And uh, of course, everyone has an opinion. I have an opinion. But my opinion is actually proved. So without the capacitor, actually the laptop is working better. Yeah, you have less ripple on the, on the main power rail. I made a video proving the point why the MOSFET, it will work lighter if it doesn't have the capacitor next to it. Has to have the capacitor near, but not exactly here. Of course, if you design a switching power supply, you'll put the capacitor exactly there, and I understand your point. If we are speaking about... Uh, the regime that MOSFET is working, it will work lighter if you put the capacitor a little bit far. Like, like you have uh, a truck, you have a coil, you have a resistance, and it's a little bit more complicated. But I did make a video, which I took it out. Now, this video is actually private, was published for members only, but was not received very well. And I definitely understand everyone uh, see this, these things on, on a different way. So, yeah, I removed the, the video and it is private, but I'm going to show you. I made a test. You see, this state which I made it, and, you know, I forgot to speci specify, actually, on real life, you can't have this. On real life, this doesn't exist. So you cannot have a switching power supply with two wires with no capacitor near to the switching uh, MOSFET or chip. But just to prove the point, yeah, I exaggerated there. So I used two wires, yeah, and here is one capacitor which is no solder. So uh, the idea of the video, here it is a capacitor. The idea of the video is showing the ripple, having a capacitor next to the chip, and, and without the capacitor next to the chip, actually here. Now Let's pressing the pressing the power button on the power supply and yeah, the way how the power supply is working, this is a buck. Yeah, it's a buck. It's not a boost. It's a buck power supply. The way how the buck power supply is working. Let me see if I can find. I know I have somewhere a meter. Yeah, I found it. I found it. Um, the way how it's working. Yeah, so it's taking like 800 milliamps, right? And you'll think here is going 800 milliamps. No, actually here is a lot more current, like 3.6 amps. This is a buck power supply. That means it's converting the voltage into the current. Indeed, here we have lower voltage. Let's see what voltage we have. I don't, even, I don't really know what voltage it is. And we have like 4.4 volts but we hire current. Good, so uh, that's uh, how a buck uh, power supply is working. Good, let me zoom and let's, uh, let's, uh, let's check with the oscilloscope. Okay, so we have the oscilloscope. The oscilloscope is set up to be sensitive, so whatever signals you see actually are, uh, are very low. So you see, we have the ripple on the capacitor. If we are shorting this capacitor from the board, check here. 
I just want to check the level of ripple, yeah? Check here. So this is weak capacitor without the capacitor. Weak capacitor without the capacitor. So actually, we are getting less ripple without that capacitor. And that's because if here we have no wires and here we have one wire till this capacitor, that's actually a resistance or can be a coil. Depends from uh, what point you are looking at the, this case. Okay, I just try to prove the point, yeah? Not having the capacitor exactly next to the MOSFET can be an improvement. Of course, again, that schematic cannot exist in real life. You need a capacitor near to the switching power supply. But many people miss the fact, you see this board? has layers and over the layers, plus, minus, plus, minus. So the board itself is a big capacitor. So next to the MOSFET, if we are checking, I mean, I can't see the track going on the inside of the board here. Like here, you can see you have holes and it's going inside of the, the board layers. But anyway, you usually you will see this kind of holes next to the MOSFET. On this case, we have the capacitor here. So having the capacitor here, like one centimeter away from the MOSFET, that's my opinion, yeah? We are not arguing here, that's my opinion, that it will, uh, it will make uh, the MOSFET working lighter, slightly. Now, I know there will be people that will say, sorry, if you don't have the capacitor here, the ripple, you know, here at the, at the MOSFET, it will be higher. Here at the MOSFET, it will be higher. But we are speaking of 40 volts MOSFET. You know, like few hundred millivolts or even volts. It's not volts. It's millivolts, microvolts or, or millivolts. Here, it doesn't matter. Yeah? Matter what is on the main power rail. Yeah? So that, that's what is important. So actually, the, the ripple on the main power rail, the ripple from this power supply, it will be lower just because of this piece of truck. And now you say, yes, sorry, but why the manufacturer, they are not building then the schematics like that? Because this part of the circuit, yeah, one centimeters, it's, a, it's not only a coil or a resistance, it's also antenna. It will increase the, the frequency leaked from, uh, from this antenna. So the idea of the design when you build something is to be sure it's complying with some standards. And the most important one is not leaking any switching frequency. Probably this is like 300 kilohertz power supply. It's not, it's not leaking outside. Not having a capacitor here, but having a capacitor here, it all kind of leaked. We're speaking microvolts. You can't even detect something like that. I mean, you see here a capacitor are more than 100 capacitors on the main power rail, probably on, the, on a laptop motherboard, excluding this big, um, maybe not 100, dozen, yeah, dozen of capacitors, excluding this big capacitor, which is the motherboard itself. But again, I don't, this is like, the same like iPhone versus Samsung people, or uh, sugar versus salt, I don't know, this kind of stuff. So I don't want to go there. The point I'm trying to make, don't risk it for nothing. You will risk it for nothing. So you, let's say, not me. Here is just the idea I'm trying to send to the people. Yeah, You found a shorter capacitor. You remove it. Just give back the laptop and enjoy the money from that repair. Because if you try to solder the capacitor, for me, nothing can happen. Most likely. But the other people, the things can go wrong. And it's about the things can go wrong for no improvement. That's the point I'm trying to make. Basically, you will see absolutely no improvement if you replace or not replace that capacitor. It is looking more professional replacing that capacitor. It is, but not for the customer. It's looking professional for the next guy, which is opening the laptop. So if you open a laptop and it's no capacitor, there was soaring. <laughs> okay. Again, I'm going to repeat one more time. This is not about me and my video. It's about the idea I want to send. And the idea is don't bother to replace a capacitor on the main power rail. Of course, you can do it. But if you are a beginner 
and your soldering skill is kind of, you know, just enjoy the moment you repair the laptop is working. Just leave it like that. And yeah, behind of the scene, actually, that most ready to live longer compared if you will have a capacitor there. We can speak about capacitor like long time. The capacitor which are soldered here are no random. Yeah, they have a res resonating frequency. So basically, if the if the the power supply switching like uh, three hundred kilohertz, then the capacitor it will resonate on three hundred kilohertz. So the story is it's a lot more complicated than the looks like. But yeah, I did prove the point. Actually, without capacitor, I have less ripple on um, you know far away from uh, from the switching power supply. But like a general idea, you want capacitors next to a switching power supply. So if I will be to design a switching power supply, I will have a capacitor next to the power supply. Of course, it will make no difference and I will have no problem if the capacitor is not soldered <laughs> next to the MOSFET drain and it's like one centimeter away on a big, freaking big truck. Yeah, it will be no problem. So I'm going to stop now. I will say thank you for watching. You know, like, subscribe if you like the video. And see you on the next one. Bye. Hey, if you find my content being helpful, don't forget you can support this channel by pressing the join button and you can get instantly access to our uh, members only cool collection and uh, Discord private channels for support with your repairs. Also, you can have a look on our uh, United Kingdom uh, eBay where you can find some cool and unique products. United States eBay store or our Patreon page. Thank you.